Welcome back to our series on probability theory. I'm Mark Ledbetter. This is lecture video 33, part B. We're discussing the normal distribution. Last time we introduced the properties of the normal distribution, the PDF, the moment generating function, and the mean and the variance. So we covered quite a bit in one uh, lecture, uh, especially with the derivations. So um, we're going to continue on, and we're going to work an example to start with. If the PDF of x is given here as f of x equals, and we've got square root of 32, uh, 1 over square root of 32 pi, and then we have the exponent here, we want to know what's the distribution of x and what is its MGF, moment generating function, excuse me. So, so to do this, we are looking at pattern recognition. You're going to learn from this point forward, pattern recognition is very important in this course. So if I write out the um, PDF of um, the normal, it's sigma square root of 2 pi, these are on the bottom of the fraction, exp negative x minus mu quantity squared over 2 sigma squared, that's the exponent of e. And so um, this quantity here, I can use that and say that th these two have to be equal. Um, or I can use this and this to find the variance, all right? So either way. So I'm trying to find sigma or sigma squared. Um, you can choose either one of those. You'll get the same answer. I'm going to choose 2 sigma squared is equal to 32. Sigma squared is equal to 16. And remember that sigma is always positive, so it's equal to 4. But we're looking for 16, really. Okay. Now I want mu. So this is x minus mu, so x minus mu has to be equal to x plus 7. So if I solve for mu, I've got x minus x minus 7 equals mu. I added mu to both sides, and I subtracted this from both sides. And so the x's cancel, and I get mu equals negative 7. So my distribution that I get here, that I've worked out how I did that here, is the distribution of x is a normal negative 7, 16. Now, to find the moment generating function, I first write out the equation of the moment generating function, and then I simply plug in for mu and sigma squared and simplify, because the 16 divided by 2 is 8. And so just plugging in, I get that answer. All right, let's look at a second example. If the moment generating function is given by this equation, Remember that moment generating functions are unique. So if two distributions have the same moment generating diff moment generating function, they're the same distribution. Okay? So we want to know how is x distributed and then we'll find its PDF. So here I I look at this and I say, well, here is the um let me write down the uh, moment generating function for the normal. This looks like a normal, so exp mu t plus t squared sigma squared over 2. And so we use a um, theorem from algebra that says if I have a um, x squared plus b x plus c equals, let's say, uh, 7x squared plus um, 3x uh, minus 4, then I can just look at the coefficients with the same powers and these coefficients have to be equal. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do here. I've got mu t. So I'm looking at the coefficient for, for t is going to be mu for this. So I've got mu is equal to, and the coefficient for t there is equal to 5. So I can just directly say that it's equal to 5. And then for t squared, I've got 12 is equal to sigma squared over 2 by this theorem. And so that means that sigma squared equals 24. And so I know that um, x is a normal with 5, 24. 5 is the mean, 24 is the variance. I plug that in. Now, why did I put this together? Because I had the square root of 24 times the square root of 2 pi. Since I had the square root of 24, I'm certainly not going to put a decimal there. That would be wrong and inexact. We can just put the square root of 24. And so 
it, it doesn't make sense to leave them separate. You could, but um, I've combined them here. And then we've got, uh, I've plugged in for five for mu, and then two sigma squared is two times 24 is 48. I put that in there. And don't forget your range of x. Now, let's talk about the standard normal. We're going to make this substitution, this transformation. Z is x minus mu. If we take the derivative of that, dz is here, dx we solve for. And notice that z squared is equal to this. And so when we look at the normal uh, distribution, the trick here is that I'm going to use the CDF of x, capital F of x. And that is going to be the integral, right, from negative infinity up to x. And since I'm using x there in the integral limits, I have to use a different variable here to be correct. And um, this value of x is what's changing. t is being integrated out, so it's x that I need to specify here. So when I look at that, <clears throat> I'm going to now use that to make my change of variable that I've done up here with z. Okay, So all of this stuff here, I'm going to use as a substitution into um, this integral here. And so when I do that, I solve for, oh, and I want to point out that um, we look at the limits of integration. So they turn out to be the same, but you have to check them okay, every time. And so I substitute in. I get mu plus z sigma here. I do the substitution. The sigma cancels. And I end up with this um, integral here, which is the integral of the, um, this is the CDF of the z or standard normal distribution. We call that phi of z. And so by the uh, fundamental theorem of calculus uh, and knowing that this is a CDF, then the derivative is a PDF. And so I end up with this um, as my derivative or as my uh, CDF. And z is distributed as a normal with zero mean and one variance. So the normal distribution is defined by its mean mu and its variance sigma squared. Um, for z, mu is equal to zero and sigma squared is equal to one. So the properties of the standard normal distribution, mu is zero, sigma is one, that's something to know. Know the mean and the variance so that you know it's this. <clears throat> z happens to be the number of standard deviations above or below the mean mu because we're taking a value x minus mu and dividing by. So this is the difference or the distance that x is from mu in the positive or negative direction, above or below, divided by the value of the standard deviation. So this gives me the number of standard deviations away from the mean, either positive or negative. And we've used the z table because we can't use a computer uh, in most cases, and before computers existed, somebody sat down and used uh, numerical approximations to uh, tabulate the z table and the z scores. Okay, so phi of z is equal to f of z, the capital F of z, the the CDF, and that's equal, as we know by definition, to the probability that z is less than or equal to little z. And here is the um, that integral for the CDF. Notice that I use W here. You could use T, any variable except for Z, because Z is here. And um, this can't be integrated using by finding an antiderivative in an elementary function or a form of an elementary function. It's, it's really messy, and that's why we have to use those numerical approximations. This was all done by hand uh, hundreds over 100 years ago, and so that tells you uh, just how dedicated they were to doing this, and it allowed people to solve problems a lot easier. So let's look at how we read a z table. So in the book, and I need to find the uh, z table in the book, so I'll quickly uh, find that table, normal distribution. Here we go. So uh, and I'll clear all my scribbling. So this is table VA, and what it has is it has um, phi of z naught. Here's z naught, right? And so it's giving you, it's giving you the area or the probability that z is less than z naught. Let's say, okay. But this only does it for z, this only gives you z greater than or equal to zero. No negatives. All right. 
and they they give you this and they they throw the formula at you and then they say something that's very important here that phi of negative z is 1 minus phi of z so that's by symmetry so if i have z not here and that's a little past 1 then what would happen if i have negative z not here and i went above this area that I'm doing in red is going to be the same as the area that's in blue by symmetry. Okay, so that's what we're doing. Uh, we're going to use symmetry to be clever and to solve problems uh, using this limited information. The book has given you exactly all you need to do it and no more. Okay, so uh, we'll have to be clever about that. Now, the other table. Um, it now has the greater than. So it has the probability of z greater than some z alpha. And at the same time, we're defining a critical value. So z sub alpha is defined such that the probability that z is greater than z sub alpha is equal to alpha. Here's the area above it. And this probability that z is greater than little z is 1 minus phi of z, which is phi of negative z. And this is important, so now we can figure out how to get the negative numbers. All right. So we'll come back to that in the next video and read the z-table and do these examples. Please don't forget to scan and upload your lecture notes before midnight, the date listed in the course calendar. Um, you'll want to update your list of distributions. If you have questions, come see me in virtual office hours. If you can't, then email me. But when you email me, I want you to email me a picture of both the problem, because I might not have it available, and your work. And then I can help you quickly through email. I hope you will stay safe, take care of yourself, and we will see you next time.